Testing one two. One, two. And mic check one two three four five. Mic check one two three five. Check one two three four five. One two three four five. my chair in the right place since I'm not going to teach town tomorrow. <laughs> Good for you. We'll see how that how that goes. Hold on one second. Can you come a little forward here? Okay. There you go. Thanks. I'm just gonna look at that there for a second. I'm shivering. because uh, I sweated earlier. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11 in HD. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Glover. And I'm Cindy Sexton. The domestic violence charges against the husband of a top aide for Mayor Andy Burke have been dismissed. Lacey Stone claimed her husband, Bobby Stone, assaulted her during an argument in May. The district attorney recommended those charges be dropped. Neil Pinkston said she gave inconsistent statements regarding what happened that night. And the DA says Bobby Stone was not notified of his constitutional rights before giving written and audio statements to police. Bobby Stone says an inappropriate relationship between his wife and Mayor Andy Burke is at the center of the case. The fact is that Mayor Andy Burke had an inappropriate relationship with my wife and he and his staff conspired with Chief Fred Fletcher to have me falsely arrested so they could cover that fact up. And that's all I'm going to say right now. The mayor and Lacey Stone have both denied those accusations. District Attorney Neil Pinkston presented a four-page memo explaining why the charges against Bobby Stone should be dropped. You can read that report on our website. A Chattanooga police sergeant is on paid administrative leave pending the results of an investigation into a domestic assault case. The Hamilton County District Attorney says Scott Kreider is accused of assaulting another police officer within the, the department. The CPD tells us Sergeant Kreider has been the aggressor in multiple domestic violence incidents. According to the police department, since 2014, there have been five cases of domestic assault involving officers. That number includes Sergeant Scott Kreider's recent case. A convicted Chattanooga murderer, Christopher Paget, is now back in jail after more than two weeks on the run. Police say he cut off his GPS monitor and disappeared two days before a jury convicted him of murder. Paget was found at a home on South Street, just five miles from the home where he escaped. Officers say he was hiding underneath a mattress. Paget was found with Javante Wynn. Wynn also went to jail on outstanding warrants for evading arrest 
and unlawful possession of a firearm. Padgett is due back in court in December. Well, Georgia State troopers are warning drivers about potential delays as a huge semi travels through the region. It's called a super load and it drove through Tennessee overnight. It's going to depart Ringgold, Georgia in the morning. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Sarah Sidery caught up with the driver to talk about the trip. The super load did not cause major traffic delays in Tennessee because it made the trip overnight, but drivers in Georgia could experience some backups. We're taking the whole interstate and we have all my escorts with me. Doug Middleton is behind the wheel of the super load parked for the night Friday at the Georgia Welcome Center. The semi is traveling from Indianapolis to southeast Florida, carrying a mobile lift platform. At 100 feet long and nearly 25 feet wide, it takes up two lanes of traffic. Both police and private escorts drive with it down the interstate. Middleton's brother, Steve, drives the truck in front, looking out for potential dangers ahead. He's calling out bridges if there's a car on the side of the road. But some drivers still try to cut out front, creating a safety hazard for everyone on the road. Don't be trying to get in front of me or trying to block my side because it doesn't work. The super load traveled through Tennessee along I-65 and I-24 overnight. Tennessee Highway Patrol reports no significant traffic delays. But on Saturday, more motorists are expected to be on the road. Middleton hopes they drive with patience. They're not going to pass. Um, and we do back up traffic quite a bit. So just be patient. The super load will leave the welcome center at 730 AM. Those driving 75 South through Georgia should expect traffic delays. In the studio, Sarah Sidery, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. The Superload's maximum travel speed is 60 miles per hour. It's expected to reach its final destination in Jupiter, Florida, Tuesday afternoon. Now to Decision 2016. Early voting began this week in Tennessee, and the Hamilton County Election Commission says they've already seen an increase in voter turn turnout. More than 11,000 people since Wednesday. Officials say they've seen almost a 2% increase compared to the 2012 and 2008 election years. Early voting wraps up in Tennessee November 3rd. The Election Commission will be open 9 to 6 tomorrow in Hamilton County. For a list of other voting places, visit WRCBTV.com. A nine-year-old boy who is fighting cancer was able to forget about medicine and treatment for just a few hours. Today, Jaden Patton had to spend his ninth birthday in the hospital. But his party is one he will always remember, thanks to some special surprise guests. Chattanooga firefighters organized a birthday surprise. There was cake, superhero, uh, there were cake, superhero presents, and balloons. But the highlight for Jaden and his friends was sitting in the fire truck, switching on the lights and the sirens. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 11, keep your jacket near. If you're out tonight, I bet you already got into it. Cooler weekend is ahead with fall like temperatures finally. Meteorologist Nick Austin will give you a full look at the forecast next. with coverage you can count on.
With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11 in HD. Hope you're having a great Friday evening. It is dry and the clouds have been clearing out. A few little showers here and there in parts of the Smoky Mountains. Just a few little light spots of rain, but we'll stay dry through the whole weekend. High pressure dry air has moved back in behind the little bit of rain that we had in spots last night. So it's going to be a great weekend. You'll just need to keep a jacket handy, especially for the evening and late night hours. The early morning hours afternoons are going to be pretty nice. Cold front gets a little closer to us early in the week. That's going to be a dry front too. Uh, maybe just a shift in the winds, maybe a few extra clouds, but that's about it. Uh, so we're not expecting a whole lot of active weather here over the uh, weekend. So get out and enjoy it. It's going to be nice. Lots of sunshine. 50s right now for most of us. 55 in the city, 54 in Cleveland. It's 52 in Pikeville and Dalton. But up in Grundy County in Altamont, it's 49. Those northwesterly winds still uh, keeping up pretty well. 10 to 15 miles an hour. 69 was the high. And that's the first time since early May that we did not reach 70 degrees. It was a nice cool day out there, but unfortunately not a drop of rain either. Still need some help with that drought. Fort Mountain during the overnight hours had a tenth of an inch. So did Delano and Riceville in the pre-dawn hours. Highs mostly in the 60s with 50s and some high elevations. Spring City picked up two tenths of an inch of rain, while Turtletown had almost a third of an inch. Clear sky for the rest of tonight here in the city. It'll be cooler, 45, and then up to 65 tomorrow. A nice afternoon after a chilly start, and we'll have plenty of sunny skies tomorrow. Your seven-day forecast, get ready for a warmer day Sunday. High of 75, and then we'll stay in the 70s heading into next week. But it looks like we'll stay high and dry with only a small chance of some rain, maybe somewhere near the end of the work week. We'll be back with all of your Friday night football highlights after the break. Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports. This is time for the Channel 3. And that's going to do it for Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. Paul Shaheen is over here doing deep knee bends and uh, <laughs> jumping jacks, kettlebell squats. What you got? Yeah, Let's go to the owl's nest and see what's going on. From Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports, this is Friday Night Football with Paul Shaheen, Jill Jelnick, Sammy Kincaid and Greg Glover. Friday Night Football, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. And by Food City, value every day. Proud sponsor of high school football. Friday Night Football. Hello everyone and welcome into another loaded Friday Night Football show. Time is of the essence, or maybe it ran out tonight. 
because the playoffs are just two weeks away. Enough wasting that thing called time. You know what's next. Hit it. It's time for the Channel 3 Friday Night Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by EPB. Well, Cleveland has seen more than a dozen players injured, including four quarterbacks. Yet with two wins and a little help, they would be playoff bound. It's the exact same scenario the Blue Raiders were in a year ago against, you guessed it, Ottawa. Well, Cleveland pulled it off last year. Could they do the same this year? Our very own Jill Jelnick is standing by to answer that question live from Jim Jarvis Field, known as the Owl's Nest. Jill. Well, Paul, it was another exciting game of the week, and this one was, well, it was the tale of two halves. Cleveland came out of the gates, fired up, ready to go in this one. You couldn't even tell they were down at 10 varsity starters tonight. They took advantage of Owls turnovers early on for the lead, but then, well, at halftime, Coach Mac Bryan must have given his Owls a good talking to because that second half, well, it was all Udawa. Ottawa just needing one more win to punch their ticket in the playoffs, but it would be the Blue Raiders who attack first. After an Owls turnover on the opening drive, Cleveland's Michaelius Elder bulldozes his way to the end zone for the first points of the game. Ottawa has an answer, though, as senior quarterback Colin Thurman throws a bullet to Andrew Manning, who runs it in for the Owls' score, 7-7. Seven seven. Cleveland then gets it back, Joseph Osterlin, with a quick pass to Mel Abdiah to make it 14-7. But Owls tied up again when Jake Sullivan returns the kick all the way back to the Cleveland end zone 14 all. Udawa had four turnovers in the first half, but this one hurt the most. Just before the break, Thurman's pass is deflected and Romeo Weichel comes up with the pick six. Cleveland leads 24 to 14 at the half. But Coach Mac Bryan and the defending region champs weren't going away just yet. Owls come out flying the second half as Thurman finds Manning for his second touchdown of the night to give Udawa their first First lead of the game. A field goal would make it 30 to 24 in the fourth, but the Owls put it out of reach with a minute to go when Cam Turner dodges the defenders for one last score. Udawa comes back to win it 37 to 24 over Cleveland. When you've been through what we've been through, you know, and these kids still out there just fighting their hearts out, you got to be proud of that. It hurts, but any lesser kids. Wouldn't, wouldn't have even been competitive in these situations. Proud of our kids, they've kept on playing and uh, we started protecting the ball a little bit better. Defense really played great, especially in the second half and uh, we're glad to make the playoffs. And, uh, we'll enjoy this one, get ready Monday, try to get ready for Walker Valley. As you can see from the highlights, Paul, turnovers were a huge factor in this one. There were nine total turnovers on the night. The Owls had to overcome five of them in order to make that comeback win in the end. And like Coach Brian said, defense was obviously coming up clutch in this one, holding a very good Blue Raiders offense scoreless in that second half. And again, with the win, Udawa clinches a spot in the playoffs, while Cleveland will finish out the season next week against White County. Paul, back to you. Thanks so much, Jill. If nothing else, Cleveland needs to hang its hat on resiliency. My goodness, they have been through a lot, persevered, persevered to still compete. Hey, Glenn Ryan and the Walker Valley Mustangs have been building up to this for quite some time now. They were tired of the occasional upset. It was time now to run with the top dogs in the big region, and they certainly have done that thus far. Walker Valley at Ray County. The Mustangs came in averaging 48 points a game. Mustang's second possession, 80-yard drive capped off by Alex King, one-yard score, 7-0 Ray County. Coming right back, marching to the one-yard line, it's Mason Stevenson pounding it in, so Ray's down, now 7-6. Second quarter we go, Walker Valley pushing the tempo again. Colton Gibson letting it go. Up top, Zach Esslinger in stride and falling in, 25-yard score, 14-6. Walker Valley up, the Golden Eagles respond again, Cody Bice. Bouncing out, cutting up. He's in. Two point conversion. Good to tie it at 14. So back and forth it went. Ray County holds on by one point over Walker Valley 35 34. Nonetheless, Walker Valley and Ray both postseason bound. Silverdale at Tyner. Someone would have the upper leg on the last Region 3 AA playoff spot. Tyner Shaylin Bailey says, why not us? 38-yard scamper. That sets up Devin Waite. Short yardage touchdown. Now the Tyner defense goes to work. They gave the Seahawks fits all night. 
sack for a 10 yard loss. Back on offense, Tyner striking again. Bailey now using his arm. Kevin Lee, 31 yard hookup. It's 14 0. Silverdale did get on the board thanks to this trickery. Wide receiver pass, Sawyer Jenkins wide open. That sets up a four yard touchdown. Tyner though on top, 32 to 7. Same region. Boyd trying to take down the first place Pirates of South Pittsburgh. That certainly helps. Bucks on defense. Jeremy Borders a pick six. Ensuing kickoff. Never do you ever want to see this happen right after you score. Joseph Lilly turns on the burners. He's not that fast, but he is fast. We sped it up. 70 yard return, 7 6. South Pittsburgh adds six more next drive. Hogan Holland on the goal line, 13 to 6. Still first quarter special teams issues in abundance for Boyd. They're punting. Dylan McQueen takes a second before he decides to bounce right. And boy, he made the right decision. He could fly. McQueen returning at 76 yards. South Pittsburgh runs away. 52 to 19. Let's go to the scoreboard now for the first time tonight. Baylor downed by MBA 31 to 10. That's back to back losses. Actually three straight for Baylor. Brainerd dropped by Bledsoe 24 to 7. Central Takes down Sequoia 37-0. East Ridge loses by three at Loudon. That's a tough loss. Hickson by one over Livingston Academy. McCauley, hello, Big Blue, 67 points to Pope John Paul II, 35. Notre Dame dropped by McMinn Central, 27-21. McMinn County takes down Saudi Daisy by nine, 33-24. Sale Creek blanked by Oakdale. Signal Mountain loses to Giles County. Hey, who got nailed? Let's find out. You got nailed. Covered by Warren and Griffin. 265 Hurt. And the Grace Baptist CCS game. Grace with a quick hit to Noah Gray. And boom. Christian Fallen's just lowering the hammer. Take another look. Great hit. Head up driving. That is You Got Nailed. And that, my friends, is just first down. And we intend to keep the chains moving. We don't punt ahead. We'll find out if Sequatchie County can make it nine straight to start the season. Plus, two of Georgia's top-ranked 5A teams meet in North Georgia. And as always, fans, bands, and cheerleaders when FNF returns. Cheer on with Channel 3's Cheerleaders of the Week. Go, let's go! Cheer on with Channel 3's Cheerleaders of the Week. Go, let's go! Let's go! Go, let's go! Let's go! You can't do it no more. Get up, get up, get up. I need you. Everyone. I need you. Everyone. Let's do it. Everyone. Let's do it. Everyone. Until, until, until. You can't do it no more. Get up, get up, get up. I need you. 
You better believe the Sequatchie County cheerleaders have had a lot to cheer about this season. On that note, in Adam Kane's first year as Sequatchie County head coach, he took the Indians from a three-win team to a seven-win team in year two. From seven wins now to eight and counting. Not done yet. Sequatchie off to an unbeaten and school best 8-0 and start. Squatch County hosting Grundy County tonight early on. The Indians set the tone. The pitch goes to Hunter Davenport. He will not be denied. 6-0 Tribe. Still first quarter. Sequatchie still looking good on offense. Ethan Barker over the top to Hunter Davenport. They make it look so easy. 13-0 at that point. Second quarter. Let's go. The Indians go back to the ground game. This is Austin Stevens taking the rock, doing his job. Short score, 27-0. Stevens did his job well tonight. There he is again. Another score. This one goes for what? 70 yards, we'll call it. Watch him turn it on right now. Not going to be caught. All Sequatchie all night. 49-0 over Grundy County. The Tribe, 9 and 0. Oh. Meg's County at Polk County. Already up 14-0 is Meg's rocking it through the air. Aaron Swafford, Zy Moore, 50-yard gain. It took a few to bring him down. That sets up another beauty of a pass. Swafford, watch this, in the bucket, the Jesse Rail. 30-yard score, it's 21-0 at that point. Now Polk trying to answer with the old hook and ladder. Hashtag hook and ladder gone wrong. Hashtag fail. Megs recovers. Back to work on offense. They go Swafford to Moore again. He's in. 28-0. Megs County with a shutout at Polk. 35-2-0. Grace Academy at Chattanooga Christian tonight. Opening Chargers drive. They're running wild. Ian Gaines gaining 40 yards untouched. Make it 7-0 CCS. Ensuing Chargers drive. The screen goes to the big boy, Nick Fulmer. He's got an entourage. You get that weight going forward, it's bound to be good. Rumbling inside the 35, that sets up another big play. Justin Wheeler rips off the mirrors. Do not look back, kid. 31 yards, 14-0. CCS would get a fourth down stop. Very next play, Matthew Mercer letting it fly. He says, go make a play, and Ben Moore did exactly that. Chattanooga Christian, a winner, 42-14. What do you say, let's go back to the scoreboard. Whitwell dropped by Columbia Academy 21 to 3. Calhoun 34 0 at Snorville. On that note, Calhoun just won its 121st consecutive region game. That is unreal. Christian Heritage goes down at Darlington. Chatuga takes down Armurchi 28 8. Cahola Creek, oh my goodness, North Murray scores 60 unanswered to win that one. Dade County falls at Pepperell 49 7. Modell all over Gordon Central 58 to 7 and Gordon Lee blanks North Cobb Christian Murray County 42-24 over LFO one more for you it's Northwest Whitfield a winner 27-14 at Gilmer hey if we've learned anything from the Ulawa fans it's expecting anything and that's the exact advice we gave our very own Sammy Kincaid who's back with this week's edition of Fan Cam Fan Cam Sponsored by Chick-fil-A. Pick up a nugget tray for your next party or event. I am on the Udawa side, and I have two fans of the game with me. Your name is? Jackson Malcolm. And Sydney Alleman. And I just want to know, why are you dressed up in neon tonight? Tonight we're wearing red to try to get some excitement for the game. It's senior night. We have a lot of seniors, and we're trying to not make this our last home game, so we try to get a good crowd for our boys. That's great. And so I just want to say congrats. There's a gift card inside for each of you. You can bet all over the cup. And it's pretty cold out here tonight, but I thought your vocal cords are frozen. Can, can I hear you? Oh, no. Yeah! <laughs> With Cleveland, and last time you did not get one of the gift cards. So first, can I get your name? Uh, Dylan Turner. And I want to hear why you think you should get the gift card this time. Uh, I'm basically the loudest one out here, so I should have won it last time, but uh, I got it this time, so uh, that's why I should win it. Congrats, you are a fan of the game, and you were a great fan last time as well. So here you go. Here's your Chick Fil A, and don't forget. And don't forget to vote for that game of the week. So next week, that could be you winning that prize. For Channel 3, Eyewitness Sports, Sammy Kincaid. Can I get a cheer?
It's time for Greg Glover to... You know the school is the Purple Pounders, but the band you're about to hear has an idea all its own. They're called... It's time for Greg Glover to strike up Channel 3's Band of the Week. Well, you know the school is the Purple Pounders, but the band you're about to hear has an ID all its own. They're called the Sound of Chattanooga. Here it is, your Band of the Week from Central High School. sound of Chattanooga. I love that. Hey, in Georgia now, Dalton is ranked number one in the state for the first time since 1986, and you better believe they're worth every bit of that number one. And 6-0, and by the way, averaging 43 points a game, with another chance to prove it tonight, hosting fourth-ranked Harrison, a big 6A showdown. The Catamounts break the ice. It's JPT. On the keeper, 10 yards score, 7 0 Dalton. Other end, remember this name Harrison Jr. cornerback, quarterback Josh Fields. He's on another level. 80 yard scramble. Fields being recruited by basically everyone, including UT and Georgia. He can throw it too to Steven Peterson. Dalton down 14 7, just like that. But the Cats get it going from there. Ahmad Tanner, the handoff. Oh my, what a cutback. Check your ankles, kid. 50 yard score, Dalton. Scores 24 unanswered to win it 31 to 14. One more in Georgia. Lafayette at Heritage. The Generals get to work early on the ground. Carter Ryan, tough yards here. He's in, takes a hit too. Now they go through the air. Corby Wilson proving why he's so dangerous to Grant Luke. Heritage doubles up 47 21 and some your final. To the scoreboard one final time. Ridgeland down by Pickens. One point, a late comeback falls short. Tryon loses to Mount Zion. We are in. Let's go Alabama now. Pell City loses to Fort Payne. Eider beats Westbrook Christian. North Sand Mountain dropped by Geraldine on the road. Scottsboro takes down Etowah 56-26. Wow. In North Carolina, Murphy a winner over Hayesville 55-0. Cherokee wins it 34-12. Quickly, you can already vote for our game of the week. There it is. Howard and Signal Mountain or Boyd Buchanan at Silverdale. That's going to do it for another edition of Friday Night Football. Thank you for watching. Thank you our crew for helping me piece another one together. We'll have all the full highlights online and inside our app in just a few minutes. What do you say we fire it up again in seven days and do it again? Until then, be cool. Friday Night Football is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors and Food City. We thank the Chattanooga area Chick-fil-A's for feeding our Friday Night Football team. Call them to order party platters for your next tailgate.